Hi, this is Nick Dawson, the editor-in-chief of TalkHouse Film, and you're listening to the TalkHouse Film Podcast. This past January, Tracy Draws Tragos and Andrew Draws Palermo's Rich Hill won the Grand Jury Prize for U.S. Documentary at the Sundance Film Festival. When TalkHouse Film launched in May of this year, Tracy was one of the site's first contributors, writing a very frank and eloquent piece about the challenges of combining motherhood with making movies. The portrait of a small, impoverished town in rural Missouri has seen through the stories of three adolescent boys. Rich Hill is now playing at theatres across the U.S. To celebrate its release, Talk House Film partnered with DCTV for a live event in which Martha Shane, one of the directors of the 2013 Sundance doc favourite after Tiller, spoke with Tragos about the experience of making Rich Hill. For all the logistical and technical challenges inherent in making a documentary, Interestingly, this conversation is focused predominantly on the human aspects of the process. But for anyone who has seen the moving and compassionate work of these two filmmakers, that maybe won't come as such a surprise. Great. Well, thank you all for coming. Um, And thank you to Tracy, obviously, for this amazing film, which I I think some of you may have seen. Most of you probably haven't. So yeah, I just wanted to start out with the most basic question that you probably hear all the time, but what is your personal connection to Rich Hill and how did that sort of infuse um, the filmmaking that you did there? Yeah, well, I made this with my first cousin, who's my co-director, Andrew Palermo, Um, and it's our family hometown. It's where his mother and my father grew up, Um, and I spent a lot of time there as a kid because my father died when I was very young, and uh, my grandparents who lived there were like surrogate parents to me. Um, And so I had a deep connection with this place, and when the notion of doing this film um, came up, I was kind of immediately (laughs) um, interested in doing it, um, at first, probably for very personal (laughs) reasons. and then, of course, it became something um, more than that. Yeah, and when you say it became something more than that, um, how did it change from that initial vision of, you know, what you wanted to do to what what the film is now? It always seems like things these things change immensely, <laughs> um, and sometimes you have your talking points and you don't want to talk about that. I've had that experience, but. Yeah, I think often documentaries change a huge amount. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, there's kind of a place that a film wants to go. I mean, we knew from our earliest conversations that, um, you know, we we wanted to explore some of the families who were struggling, and we didn't know exactly who the voice of uh, of the film would be. But we got to town and started talking to people and meeting people and. We met Apache first, um, and I think we met Andrew somewhere in and around there, and Harley probably the the last. But um, but we were drawn to them for different reasons, and you know once we met them and got to know their families, um, when you have a connection, you know again you feel it, and that um, you know be, they became the focus of our story. But we did you know, we cast a very wide net. We did a lot of shooting with a lot of people that didn't end up making it in the film. Um, And there was also a lot of shooting that we did that ended up, um, you know, being in the service of our access later where we were just getting to know people and we were doing sit down interviews with them, even though we knew that we didn't want this film to be sit down interview based, but it was a process of getting to know people. I thought, you know, obviously the decision to focus on these three young men is really key. And um, and I think, you know, I was curious about the issues of of consent in that situation, because, you know, what were the conversations that you had with these kids before getting them involved? And I always feel like, you know, to a certain extent, like when you're younger, you're trained to sort of do what adults tell you and you may or you may not but that's sort of what you're trained to do so it seems like such a complicated question of how you approach that yeah I mean we we had to get um their parents consent first of all um but I think Andrew Jewell here thought that Andrew Palermo 
um, was a cop at first. <laughs> so he was actually not so trusting. He was a little mistrust, you know, he was kind of, I don't know about this guy. Um, but I mean, I hope, I hope in the end we were trustworthy and, you know, we, we went into their homes and met their families and talked about what we wanted to do and, um, and, and continue to talk about it. And we were also there for a long time. So it's, it's not like you're kind of in and out and everybody's got to figure out if they're going to grant access right away. You know, it's, it's a sort of something that evolves over time and a long period of time so makes sense yeah and how um how long was that period of time were you did you go back and forth from your home to rich hill many times or? yeah yeah i mean we started our first shoot was in december of 2011 and then our last shoot was in july of um 20 i'm getting my <laughs> <laughs> where are we now um i think it was 2013 um, and, uh, and, you know, we would sometimes be there for a week, sometimes a little longer and sometimes once a month. So sometimes every six weeks, it, it, you know, um, but a lot, we shot a lot of footage and a lot of days. Right. <laughs> He's like, yes, yes, <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Um, that's so I, you know, one thing I thought was really interesting about the film in a way is just the the different relationships that different kids had with the camera. And I felt like some of them treated it like their best friend and they were always talking to the camera and always sort of engaging with you guys as filmmakers and others were more just like, you do your thing, I'll do my thing. Um, can you talk about about that, like, how did you direct them or not direct them? Well, I don't think that I don't think we really did much directing. It was kind of true to, um, you know, in terms of directing the kids. I hope we did directing in the film and making of it. But um, uh, Harley, who talks to us, and talks to the camera, and that was part of who he was, and that was part of his character. So to kind of authentically portray him we included that because that was kind of that was his shtick you know I, I always wonder you know are there times when you're making a documentary like this there certainly were when you know in my last film after tiller where we had a subject who just loved to talk and they would talk a lot and that's great and they were very articulate but also sometimes we'd have to say look we just need the shot of you driving we just need you to be quiet and just drive the car and just pretend we're not here <laughs> and so I guess I wonder like does did that happen you know as far as like verite filmmaking goes it's such a there's so few people who are making strict verite films, yeah. and this is not that. No, no. Um, yeah, this was definitely not that. I mean, we would come in and out of conversation. Um, you know, sometimes I think back to, um, I went to film school. Um, I have an MFA in screenwriting. Um, and when I was in film school, we had to take a bunch of different classes and different um, disciplines, and one of the classes was an acting class and just talking about, I, I remember one of the things was about business and what people do with um, actors do with their hands and if they're engaged in um, something of their character. And you know, I thought about that when we would, were with um, Andrew and Harley and Apache that you know, they could be engaged in what they were doing in their lives. Um, and so we would come in and out of conversation and wouldn't necessarily always have these kind of sit down interviews. Um, and then have moments of, you know, where we would pause and just let them do what they were doing. Um, but in terms of like any chatty Cathy's or, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> you know, I, 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 you know, we, we, we shot a lot of stuff that's not in the film, so. You know, there are moments that um, where people notice the camera or um, were particularly interested in getting something off their chest. Um, but yeah, for the most part, we didn't actually encounter that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Guess it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> no. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, it was really. There's a really powerful scene where Harley, one of the kids in the film, is 
talking about um, an experience, talking about rape, and it sort of comes to the surface that he's had an a personal experience with this and it's so dark you know it's almost completely dark at night and you have that feeling like I, w- I always felt like all the most interesting conversations or like deeper conversations I had with my parents were like in the car at night where right. we couldn't see each other so yeah I was just wondering about that scene and like when you were filming um, with him that night this is a big reveal in the film and I don't want to no spoilers, I guess, but, you know, it's that this kid has had, has been abused, and um, did you, were you shocked when you heard that? Was that something you knew about? Well, yeah, we knew about it. I mean, it was something that we talked with Harley about a lot, and it was something that had come, came up, actually, you know, somewhat often for him, that he would kind of randomly come up with that a little bit, and I, I feel like he needed to get that off his chest in some ways there he, he didn't have many opportunities to talk about that and um he wanted us to bear witness in a way to the fact that that had happened to him um so but that was not the first instance of us learning of it um but i think it was you know it particularly struck us how close to the surface it was for him when it did come up in that moment and you know, on Halloween. Um, so, and we also, you know, talked with him a lot about the fact that he would be sharing that with a lot of people and that that would be in movie theaters or may, you know, if we were so lucky as indeed we, you know, are, and that, you know, it might be on television and that a lot of people would know that. And how did he feel about that? Um, and he felt okay with that. Like he really kind of wanted to, share that with audiences um, and was pretty strong about that feeling of wanting to do that so yeah no it's a very brave thing um, to yeah. to talk about publicly and um, and I wonder now like having now that the film is about mm-hmm. to be or you know getting out into the world what have his have his feelings stayed the same um, do you think he is he someone who would be willing to talk publicly about that experience or is he sort of I mean off? no I mean he he has come with us to film festivals mm-hmm. and actually really appreciates um that experience of mm-hmm. standing up in front of an audience and talking about his life I mean I don't know if he would want to go into details necessarily mm-hmm with a bunch of people that he doesn't know, but I think the notion of saying that that happened to him and, um, uh, you know, bring some solace, um, Mm -hmm. because I think for a long time he carried that around um, with him in a way that, you know, perhaps wasn't healthy. And so, uh, you're a mom, as I know, but only because you've like written publicly about what it's like to be a mom and a filmmaker, um, written very eloquently about it. And so I guess Thank I'm you. curious, like, um, what were your, your, your relationships with these young kids at this time? Um, how did that sort of ultimately affect your the way you see your own kids and the way you relate to your own kids? Did it did it have an impact in that way? You know, I, I mm-hmm. yes, I think so. I mean, I um, I learned a lot from um, Andrew and Harley and Apache. I mean, I think Andrew is incredibly optimistic, and there's something there that um, is amazing, um, and. You know, Harley has this great sense of humor um, and could, you know, crack me up when I least expected it. And I think Apache, I was always, you know, struck by his sense of, you know, forgiveness and being willing to forgive some really hard stuff um, and still love (laughs) as deeply as he did. you know, and and with my own family, I, um, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I think that my kids, um, I, I sometimes 
miss them more when I'm with these guys mm-hmm. and I see the connections with their own families and I think about well you know think about the choices that I'm making and that I'm not there and the, that I'm with somebody else's kids and not my own kids and what kind of person am I? I mean, I do go back to my kids and <laughs> reconnect with them. So there's that. Um, but, you know, there's always a little bit of, of guilt and sadness to not be with them when I'm on the road. So, yeah. Do you think it helped as far as relating to young people that you did have kids or? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think it helped relating to the moms, certainly. I mean, it, there's an experience there of having children and also having the stresses of having children, particularly young children. And um, so there was a bond that uh, I feel like, you know, I had with Andrew's mom and with um, with all the moms. Um, so, and, you know, I think I, I feel a little bit motherly towards the boys in the film as well probably give too much advice and I you know we were much more involved than one might think in seeing the film I mean we really wanted them to be the authors of their story and to not have it be about us going to make a film and it was going to be their story um but you know that didn't mean that we didn't talk to them a lot um when the camera wasn't rolling or, you know, offer advice. And that doesn't mean that our relationship also stops now that the film is over. I, there's a scene, I think, when you first meet Apache, he's smoking a cigarette. And I was just like, oh my, I had this like, oh my gosh, take it away. Because, yeah. you know, he's so young. And I guess I wonder if there were moments for you in the film, obviously you did not snatch the cigarettes out of his hand. But were there yeah. moments where you felt like like you w- wanted to intervene or you did intervene or you... Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I talked to Apache about smoking and, you know, I mean, I would sometimes, like, be in the room and cough and, like, I have to go outside now because I just needed a little fresh air. And um, so, no, that was definitely a conversation that we had. I talked to Harley about not walking out when he was walking out of school. I mean, that's not in the film, but, you know, I asked him, you know, I think you ought to go back in there. Um, So, yeah, there were, there was, there were definitely moments. I remember telling Andrew that he needed to go put on a jacket and he's like, no, no, I just, I just, sometimes I just shiver like this. And I was like, that's because you're cold. Like go in and put your, put a jacket on. Like enough is enough. Um, Anyway. talk a little bit about co-directing like I've co-directed you've you co-directed um and it's interesting too because you you have a male co-director I guess I'm curious especially about sort of that like male female dynamic do you think you guys played very different roles on set or yeah I mean we totally play different roles it was kind of it was a pretty clear you know um division of labor which um, which was great. I mean, Andrew is an amazing cinematographer, so he would be behind the camera. Um, I mean, it was probably when we weren't shooting that we had the most collaboration and talking about how we were going to approach things or the direction that we would take or um, you know who we felt a connection with or moments that we thought were especially important. Um, but... Um, but when we were in production, you know, he would shoot and I would do, <laughs> the, I would do the talking right. when there was talking and, and that sort of, uh, that side of things. We both edited. Um, so we had an office where we would then take the footage and he had a station and I had a station near each other and we would cut scenes and we would sort of shape, um, what we were capturing, um, so he and I together worked on a three-hour assembly that then in um, May of 2013, we were able to hand off 
to our editor. And because we had spent so much time with the footage, um, you know, we, I think we were able to do that a little more freely without needing to like breathe down our editor's neck. So the fact that he was in New York and we were in LA was, um, just fine. (laughs) So, (laughs) yeah. Um, and you know, and for a while, I mean, Andrew is my co-director. He's also my cousin. So he was living in my house (laughs) and you know, I mean, it was, it was quite a cozy relationship. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, he was homeless and <laughs> he was homeless basically. Yeah. And you know, I mean, I, I had a lot of credit cause I had done some independent films before and I had put things on my credit card. So, you know, I basically, uh, put our first year of production on credit cards, which was wow, pretty intense. Movie. Um, but, and then thankfully Sundance came on board, um, right when we needed it most cause I couldn't do it anymore. Um, but, um, so I was kind of, you know, I was, I was the one that did the, the money side of things and the funding and, Mm -hmm. you know, but we were quite clear and we, I think it was important that we had a contract early on, even though we were first cousins. I was like, you know, we got to do this because people get all persnickety once you get into it. And so let's do this. And, um, I'm glad we did because that was important. And we just said, you know, we're just going to be co-directors, co-producers, because we're both invested in this. We love it. And, Mm -hmm. um, so that was our arrangement. Well, it's a very like beautifully shot and beautifully scored film. Um, and I'm curious about, you know, particularly the shooting style. Did you guys talk a lot about that in advance and um did you did you work with like did you, like rigs did you have sliders and dollies oh, no. or was it just yeah, andrew no, no. and <laughs> <laughs> do we have sliders handheld? when we're doing in the grocery store andrew <laughs> is in a he's in a grocery cart mm-hmm. okay oh nice just being, <laughs> being pushed, pushed along <laughs> that is very effective it's a beautiful beautiful shot yeah no so. he's in a he's in a grocery cart um we had mm-hmm. no you know fancy stuff like that I mean what we did do is we we did talk a lot early on and we decided you know we made the big commitment to shoot um on a red Mm -hmm. which was kind of terrifying um how we would approach that and manage that 4k footage and um but we really wanted to give this film and and this community and um uh cinematic treatment and Mm -hmm. to have it be as beautiful as possible and you know as beautiful as we could you know possibly afford because because of how much we loved it um so so yeah we talked a lot about it um and we talked about wanting the town to be a character of sorts um Mm -hmm. we really wanted to take people there and have it be a bit immersive um Mm -hmm. we also approached that in the sound design Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we talked about the angles in part, you know, wanting, sometimes we shot from a lower angle um, rather than looking down um, on folks, um, looking up and more of a hero treatment. It's funny because I had heard a lot of people say it's this very safe film before I saw it. And then when I saw it, though, it's such a sort of lyrical, yeah, like thing. It's not exactly like a strict verite no film no on any level so yeah um, when people yeah, say that i'm always a little surprised to me <laughs> yeah i'm confused sometimes when people say that i mean yeah. um i mean there are moments that yeah, are sure. you know verite moments but again we were always coming in and out of it and we knew we didn't want to do a talking head piece with statistics or outside experts i mean that was kind of right. off the bat clearly not what we wanted to do with this i mean you said you know you like with the parents of the film you had this connection and and I guess I wonder also like you know about the choices you make about what to show on camera and what not to show because in a lot of ways it is a film about parenting and um and I felt sometimes like especially you know in the relationship between Apache and his mother that there was this sort of lingering tension and like almost violence and I just wondered you know were there things that you decided to keep off camera that were sort of damning to her as a parent or um yes yes (laughs) yes yeah no I I think it wasn't we didn't want to 
we didn't want to do a disservice, you know, to anybody. We didn't want to go so far if we had captured something that we felt wasn't fair or a moment that we shouldn't have been there or that, you know, ultimately wasn't, you know, we didn't include it. So I think there were harder moments that just that just didn't make it in the film for any number of reasons. Um, so, but yeah, no, I think sometimes being there, I mean, that was probably the hardest stuff sometimes um, is when she was so incredibly stressed out. I mean, she has some reflection about it now. She's one of the film's like greatest champions. And um, I mean, I do think we were the most worried about her and how she would feel but um, but she saw it before we shared it with audiences and talked about what a stressful time it was for her and her own capacity for change. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm good with what we have in there, um, but it was hard in the moment to be in the midst of some of that for sure. And it felt very, yeah, even as you don't see any real violence or anything on screen, it still just felt so fraught <laughs> yeah it was intense yeah. it was mm -hmm. hard you know it was really hard you know there was just so many kids and tense you know I feel like the way that I've seen the film being portrayed in the media and um you know it's, it's a film about sort of um what it's like to be poverty in America and these small communities and and but I also felt you know the first time like maybe a year ago I think Andrew the co your co-director sent me a little footage and I watched it and I thought and I was like wow this is a film about like kids and depression <laughs> or like kids and mental illness and mm. um and I wonder like that seems like that's such a a big theme in the film did you guys sort of consider including more of it or less of it? Was that something that you thought a lot about? We didn't want to make it about one issue ultimately. And it was more about an experience and more about families. And, you know, so it's, it's less of an issue film. And so that was a choice. I mean, we, we definitely observed that that was something that both Apache and Harley were dealing with. Right. Yeah, um, it was just very striking, and it seemed like, um, you know, that it, the film could be viewed as, you know, even outside of the economic sort of issues as a film about yeah. these kids who are struggling in that way. Um, yeah, no, and, I, you know, I think if we felt that there was a real lack of mental health services, um, you know, not so much that either, you know, Harley or Apache had mental illness because mm -hmm. so much as they just could really have benefited from having someone to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, definitely. Um, and to what extent did you become those people to talk to? I think that, I mean, that I th happens. I think that that happened. You know, I mean, the camera was kind of a way of bearing witness to their experience. Um, I think for sure with Harley and talking about his past and also for Apache um, when he talked about his dad and yeah, I mean, he, he wanted somebody to talk to and he wanted, you know, the, the camera was, was an attention that I think he, he craved, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes and it's hard for his mother to give it to him because she had all these other kids and she was working and trying to make ends meet and you know the way she was scattered and so we came in and we had a camera and would be very focused on him and he had somebody who was giving him attention um and so in a way yes we acted acted as that and that's what makes it really hard when you turn the camera off, it's like, do those conversations have to stop or the quality of that focused time? Um, right. And I think about that sometimes. Right, yeah, and I think, you know, every filmmaker sort of has a different approach. Some stay in touch with their subjects forever and some, you know, it's sort of the film is over and that's the end of the relationship. So I think it's, yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm sure the, your relationships with them will evolve over time. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm certainly not one that the film is over, the relationship yeah. ends. That right. doesn't yeah. feel, that doesn't feel fair at all. <laughs> um, so that's not the case. I mean, I, 
I assume and I would hope that it's ongoing. Yeah. Well, thank you guys all so much for coming. And thank you, Tracy, for oh, being thank such you. a and thank you. fascinating subject. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs>